we gather to say that the Labour Party is a racist party. The Labour Party is an institutionally anti-Semitic party in the grip of racists. The anger among some is palpable. In Westminster last week, a rally organised by the campaign against anti-Semitism. Well, we can see that this is just the thin edge of the wedge, uh, that what is happening now is exactly what happened in Nazi Germany in the 1930s. My father came here after the war as a Polish refugee, and he thanked his Lord every day that he was in this wonderful country. He would be rolling in his grave now. The latest flashpoint how to define anti-Semitism. It's perfectly possible to disagree with the policy of the state of Israel without bringing in things like the blood label, without bringing in ideas of Holocaust denial and so on. Last week, Labour's ruling body adopted a new code of conduct, which clearly says anti-Semitism is racist and unacceptable. But critics say it falls short as it leaves out or changes some examples which are included in the definition set out by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, the IHRA, such as claiming Israel's existence as a state is a racist endeavor, requiring higher standards of behavior from Israel than other nations, and comparing contemporary Israeli policies to those of the Nazis. Labour says its version does cover all of these and goes further while still allowing respectful debate about Israel and Palestine. For many of the party's supporters, that's crucial. This was the Tolpadu Martyrs Festival yesterday, a celebration of the foundations of trade unionism and a platform for causes often popular with the political left. One regular attendee says Labour's leadership is right to question the international definition of anti-Semitism. How you allow um, criticism of the state of Israel um, uh, that's, that's not anti-Semitic. And what we don't want to do is by adopting the IHRA uh, definition of anti-Semitism, make it impossible for the Pal Palestinian people's voice to be heard. I'm against anti-Semitism, there is anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, we need to get it out there. And if the tool that we're going to do that with is the IHRA definition, and I think it, it can be, most of it, it needs to be tightened up. The Labour leader, who was at Tolpuddle himself, has said there will be a consultation. We will not allow anti-Semitism in any form, we will not allow Islamophobia in any form, we will not allow any racism in any form within our society. Jeremy Corbyn has long campaigned against racism. There are some who think the issue of anti-Semitism is merely being used to undermine his leadership. Others, though, think it's bigger than that. Zionist intimidation. Zionist the tension's obvious. This video was taken by a local Action for Israel group. They turned up at the Tolpuddle Festival for the first time in three years. Come and talk to us, we'll talk to you. Corbyn is anti what's happening to the Palestinians. He is not anti-Semitic. The problem is that the narrative in the left, on the left, tends to be anti-Israel. And we think that that needs correcting, which is why we're here. But is it as simple as right versus left politically? No. When anti-Semitism starts seeping into Her Majesty's opposition, you know, that is serious stuff. Here, many simply don't agree that that's the case. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist in the Labour Party, but I don't feel it exists as much as it's been paid for. You think it's been made into a bigger issue than it actually is? Issue. Because it's convenient. I think it's been kind of manufactured by Labour's opposition, and I think a lot of people who are opposed to what Israel's doing have got a right to say that. It doesn't mean that they're anti-Semitic. I think the two things have been conflated. The noise around this divisive issue, certainly for now, shows no sign of quietening. Well, that was Alice Forsyth, Alex Forsyth joining us now. Hugh Lanning from the Palestine Solidarity Campaign, formerly of the PCS Union, and Jonathan Friedland, the Guardian columnist. Very nice uh, to welcome you both here. And we've heard uh, also this evening that the NEC now, the uh, body, will revisit the conversation uh, 
talking to Jewish groups, so there has clearly been some kind of a shift. Um, Hugh, I'm just wondering what you make of tonight's decision to re-ballot um, the parliamentary Labour Party in September. I think it's good for the Labour Party to try and reach a consensus. I think they ought to try and talk not just to Jewish organisations, but to Palestinian organisations and Palestinians in this country, uh, because the debate, when you get to the core of it, is around the issue of the discussion on Israel and Palestine. That's where all the controversial uh, clauses come up, and there's two sides to that, and so the Labour Party should be talking to both sides. Um, do you accept that they were pushed into this change because it was originally the wrong position? They got on the wrong side of it. I think they got themselves into a difficult position. Uh, there's been general agreement within the Labour Party about the actual definition. Uh, if you go back to last October, there was a select committee inquiry into anti-Semitism, and that was a majority of Tories. It had Keir Starmer on it, it had Chucker on it. That said, it broadly accepted the definition, but then wanted two clarifications of the issue on freedom of speech and expression. So this has always been a debate, and it should be accepted in the Labour Party that there's real serious issues that need to be resolved. Jonathan, the way Hugh describes it, it is a debate between Jewish voices and Palestinian voices, not uh, about anti-Semitism at all. Except this is a definition of anti-Semitism. That's what this is. The starting point is. They were trying to accept it. Jonathan. Start, okay. So imagine this is the situation hypothetically. Imagine it's the early 1990s when trust by the Black British community in an institution, let's say the Metropolitan Police, was very, very low. Then imagine the Metropolitan Police say, "We've decided that this code on racism that you, the Black community, have accepted, and that governments all across Europe have accepted." We, the Metropolitan Police, want to change it ourselves, unilaterally. We've got a subcommittee of five people, majority white, and we're going to change that code without consulting you. Once we've done it, we're going to present that code to you and ask you to take a look at it and be grateful to us for typing this code. Everybody on the left would, know, would mock that with total derision from the start. They would say, how on earth can you redraft a code on racism without including black groups? Labour, on its own, decided it knew best to redraft a code on anti-Semitism <clears throat> without talking to Jewish groups. Now, afterwards, they want to include Jewish groups. They right. didn't do it at the time. Hugh, it, it is an extraordinary place for Labour to put itself outside of a consensus. Why would they choose to do they, that? They haven't, actually. The consensus is around the definition, the real definition which the IRHA published themselves. If you read their document they published in 2016, and it's only been around since 2016... Yeah, the, it's definition, a, the definition no, 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 every no. decade. It doesn't. Yeah. That was the EU definition. It wasn't the IRHA yeah, definition. And it's different. It was revived. It's different. But, the, but let me finish, Jonathan, OK? You've just sure. had your say. Uh, but what the Labour Party is saying is we take that definition, but there's real issues about how it's applied within the Labour Party. And that's not just the case in the Labour Party. The universities okay. are having that discussion, but one of councils them, for example, and the government's having that let's discussion. Let's go down to the actual the wording. Uh, these are the bits they've missed out. Claiming Jewish citizens more loyal to Israel than their own nation. Claiming the existence of the State of Israel is a racist endeavour and comparing Israeli actions to those of the Nazis. Now, the they State of left Israel... Those out. Well, these are the bits that have, that, that have been left so out. So, like on Nazis, they've said National Socialists rather than Nazis, but they've said exactly the same. All right. No, OK. So, it... on, the, on the existence of the State of Israel, the State of Israel was created, we know, as a homeland for Jewish people. Yeah. Do, you, do you regard that as a racist endeavour? I mean, this is a, fundamentally at the core. Do you regard the creation of the State of Israel as a homeland for Jewish people as a racist endeavour? Well, I regard the law that Israel passed last week on national state as a racist question. law. Not the same question. And That's arguing about modern-day politics. I think it's politics. reasonable, then, for people to say that Israel applies racism in how it operates. And that's a legitimate Jonathan, criticism that, that, to be raised. But that's completely... And that isn't anti-Semitic no, in doing sure, that. Sure, it isn't. But, you're, but the question was about the very existence of, and the actual code says, the IRA code says, a state of Israel, meaning any state, for homeland for Jews, is the very idea of Jews having a country of their own racist. And the IRA code said... That you couldn't say that, but Labour didn't wanted to change that and say that the Arico wasn't good enough. It's you have to prove that issue. You, no, no, it didn't. It has. That's, no, no, no. It has. That, that's one of the lines. The race endeavour line is one of those ones that has was it, one of the illustrative examples that Labour said it couldn't accept, as it was in IRA. That's why it had to change it. That's why we're having this discussion. It hasn't changed the principle. No, it, okay. it, well, we're, we're, we're going to be so, going so, around so, in circles so here. So Hugh is, do, do you not Hugh accept that some discussion? Many people w w worry um, that 
This is shutting down debate. So, so this is the, shutting exactly. down so freedom this is of speech the and debate. So, for example, on the nation state bill uh, that was passed last week, a lot of the people who were tweeting against that, de denouncing that move, me included, were also people who'd criticised Labour, Labour's move on this definition. This in is other what words, you were talking about. There are plenty of people, yeah. last there are week plenty in people who seem to have no problem at all criticising Israel without needing to call Jews Nazis or Absolutely. questioning their loyalty. They don't seem to have any problem. IRA allows that. The IRA definition, as it stands, allows criticism of Israel. You do not see people being frog-marched into jail by the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service, who accept this definition for those kinds of criticisms. So why was it OK for the Select Committee to have this they discussion? They accepted the definition. And they, and added, the on, they added on yes, but they accepted, points about you, the they, state of Israel they added, and they, how it could be discussed. Listen, for one second. Is it, is they not, accepted the definition and all the illustrative examples and then added two clarifications. Labour Just said, on this we issue. cannot accept all the illustrative examples. So we, Labour, on them? our own, must rewrite I know you're them. not in the Labour okay. Party, but I would just, you I accept? I want to open this up a bit, because the reason... If you start from the premise that Labour is choosing not to put certain things in, is it it's because... Not, it, that isn't the right premise, though, is it? Well, it has gone out of its way to not take the definition that everyone else has taken, right? So is it doing that because it believes that no-one else has given its, its, its parties or its teams freedom of speech? Or is it that it worries about the people that would fall foul of this law? No, it Conduct. worries, and the Palestine Solidarity Campaign, as lots of other people do, worries that the IRHA definition will be used and is being used to limit freedom of expression on Palestine. And we've seen that in but universities. Who do you think is not being able to speak then? Eh? Palestinians. Palestinians are being frightened out in, of raising... In British their, universities, in British universities, are not allowed yes, to... Yes, Don't academics, you. students... Well, I notice a very vigorous discussion. There is criticism of Israel. Uh, what, you know, you know, there's no shortage of that. You can find it and nobody's policing it. There is, unfortunately, on some of the message boards that are anti-Israel, there is some vicious anti-Jewish expression. Mm. And if the Palestinian movement, and in its, in its wider sense, I'm not talking about Hugh here, had policed this a long time ago to say that if you've got people with conspiracy theory... Uh, uh, Talking about but, the Rothschilds controlling that. the world. We do that. And yet you can see it in a harbour. You know about the Palestine Live group. It's been exposed. The We've kinds of people the from kinds our of organisation. Right. So in that case, it, you should anybody wants to criticize Israel but doesn't want to say Jews are disloyal, that there isn't okay. a Jewish conspiracy in Jews and Nazis, they have nothing to fear from this definition. Thank you both very much indeed, and thank you for coming in. Thank you.